Now we're going to predict the shape of molecules that have three electron densities or three groups of electrons, uh, whether they are bonds or whether they are lone pits, etc. So I'm going to pick the example, uh, the first example of AlCl3. Now AlCl3, aluminium is making three bonds with chlorine, three different chlorine atoms. So it's making three bonds with three totally different chlorine atoms. So the bonds are going to be repelling each other. So this chlorine bond, electrons in this bond would be repelling electrons in this bond and the electrons in this bond would be repelling electrons in this bond. So, so the only way possible for the three bonds to exist is that if they are as far away from each other as possible. And the only way that's possible is if aluminum chloride has this fan shape, this thing looks like a fan. Uh, so the only way that's possible is if it has a fan shape and the angles that uh, the bonds would have in between them would be 120 degrees. So all these angles would be 120 degrees. So it's going to exactly look like a fan. The three bonds are going to be as far away from each other in the three dimensional space. So this would be 120 degrees as well. And this angle over here would also be 120 degrees. The shape of this molecule would be called trigonal, trigonal planar. So technically it wouldn't be called fan shape. It looks like a fan, but the technical name for this shape, for this fan shape molecule would be trigonal planar and the angles are going to be 120 degree. So let's pick another example of a molecule that has a trigonal planar geometry and that molecule could be is uh, let's think of sulfur trioxide sulfur trioxide sulfur is making double bonds with oxygen three oxygens so it's making a double bond with another oxygen and a double bond with a third oxygen so it's making three double bonds and the geometry of the molecule and the shape of the molecule is going to be again trigonal planar and the angles would be 120 degrees because uh, there are three electron densities and again think of the double bond as a single electron density because the electrons are grouped together so the electrons in this double bond would be repelling electrons in this double bond and they would be repelling electrons in this particular double bond so so let's write down the angles the all the angles are going to be 120 degrees So all the angles would be 120 degrees and the shape is again going to be trigonal planar. Now I'm going to give more examples and I'm going to add in a little variations in this three electron density. So for example, I have a molecule, uh, which is this, which is a C double bond. So the molecule is C double bond O. And it has it has single bonds and it's making single bonds with two hydrogen atoms. Now, if you look at this molecule, again there are three electron densities. There's a double bond. Think of the double bond as electrons that are grouped together. So there are four electrons over here. And there's a single bond over here and a single bond on this side. So again there are three one electron density over here, one electron density over here, and one electron density over here. Again, there are three electron densities. The shape is going to be exactly the same, but remember that a double bond as we told earlier is that the double bond has more electrons so the double bond has more electrons in it so it's going to exert a greater force of repulsion so it exerts a larger force of repulsion now the bonds are repelling each other but the forces of repulsion are not exactly equal so in this particular scenario the double bond would be exerting slightly larger forces of repulsion so what that would do is it's going to push the two hydrogen bonds closer together so they would be slightly closer together so so the angles in this case between the hch these angles over here these angles would be slightly lesser than 120 degrees but only slightly lesser than 120 degrees not a huge difference but slightly lesser because of the repulsion and the angles over here would be slightly greater than 120 so the angles on the other side would be slightly greater than 120
20 degrees. So just remember this, the double bond has more repulsion. So it, since it's pushing electrons, it has greater force of repulsion. So that pushes the two hydrogens closer together. The shape is exactly trigonal planar, but there would be slight variation in the angles that the bonds are making. Now we're going to discuss another variation where you have two bonding pairs and one lone pair. Again, the electron densities are, you still have three electron densities. So the example I'm going to take is the molecule of uh, sulfur dioxide. Now sulfur dioxide has one sulfur and that sulfur is making double bonds with two oxygen atoms. So it's making double bonds with two oxygen atoms but it has a lone pair, a completely full, the two electrons in the outer shell of sulfur that are not bonded yet. So it has lone pairs. And again, you have three electron densities. So the shape would apparently be the same, but remember there is nothing attached on this side. So if you look at this molecule, this molecule would, would be bent. It, uh, it has nothing on this side. So think of a fan that has nothing on one side. So if you move one side, although there are electrons there, but there's no atom attached on this side. So the shape pretty much is exactly the same, but the molecule now looks bent. Instead of the fan shape, trigonal planar shape, this shape would be called, it's called a bent shape. Or you can call it a V shape, or you can call this a non-linear shape. So without anything attached, without any atoms attached on the other side. So this side is gone, although they are lone pairs, but there's nothing on this side. So it's just a bent V-shaped molecule. And this time I also told you one thing that lone pairs exert a larger force of repulsion because lone pairs are not being attracted by any other atom. So their negative charge is very, very concentrated. It's not scattered. So since lone pairs have a very strong, concentrated, high charge density, negative charge, so the force of repulsion exerted by lone pairs is much greater. So these lone pairs would be repelling these bonds with a, with a lot more strength, which is going to which is going to bring the two oxygen atoms closer together. So previously the, the angles were 120 degrees, but now the angle would decrease to 117 degrees between the two oxygen atoms. So whenever you have a lone pair and you have two bonding pairs, because of the extra repulsion of the lone pair, the angle between the two oxygen uh, bonds, it's going to decrease.